We're going to be using the distributive property a lot this semester. So it's an important property and one that you should make sure you are comfortable using. Again, I have another video link here if you want to watch someone else talking about it. So we say if we're given A times B plus C, this is a time when we can use the distributive property. What you need to notice is that this has more than one term in the brackets. So whenever there's more than one term in the brackets, we're going to use the distributive property. The distributive property says we can take that term outside the bracket and multiply it by each term inside the bracket. So this gives us A times B plus A times C. Hmm, I don't know why my numbers are disappearing there. I want to show you what this looks like using numbers because I often find that numbers help me make sense of mathematical concepts. So if, for example, I had four times five, we know the answer is 20. But let's use the distributive property to answer or to ask this question. So instead of five, I'm going to write two plus three. I use the distributive property. So notice I'm not following order of operations. I'm using the distributive property instead. This gives me eight plus 12. And the answer is still 20. What if I changed five to one plus four and use the distributive property? This is four plus 16, still 20. When we're using variables, we can never add or combine the terms inside the bracket. And that's why the distributive property is essential. We use order of operations and simplify inside the brackets first because we're trying to make our question simpler. So let's get rid of this and let's take a look at using the distributive property here. So we have two times each term inside the brackets. Two times five is 10 plus two times X. In question two, we need to be careful because we have a negative sign. So we start with negative four times two. And then negative four times negative X plus four X. Negative four times Y minus four Y. Question three is interesting. That negative sign outside the brackets, we could think of that as negative one if we wanted to, and then use the distributive property again. Negative one times A is negative A. Negative one times negative B plus B. Negative one times C minus C. Notice what happened. We had a positive A, it became negative. We had a negative B, it became positive. We had a positive C, it became negative. That negative outside the bracket changed the signs inside. Pause your video and use the distributive property for question four. I know a lot of you think that those lines on top aren't necessary, and they aren't. However, pretty commonly, people forget to distribute all the way through the bracket. Those lines just help us remember to multiply every term by the term outside. Now, question five is interesting because we have subtraction in front of multiplication. 
Remember, I can't simplify inside the brackets, so I have to do my multiplication next. And that's the multiplication of negative three times each of these terms. So we keep the x. We're not doing anything with it. Negative three times eight is negative 24. Negative three times x minus three x. Now I see I have like terms. So I can simplify this further. Negative two x minus 24. Pause your video, try question six. We have like terms again. Question seven. Now notice I'm not writing x seven. We always put the numerical coefficient in front. X times seven is seven x. What about x times negative x? We know it's going to be negative negative x squared, good. Question eight. We're gonna keep that eight and then we have negative three y times two, negative six y, negative y or times negative three y, positive, 3y squared. That was a bit tricky. Why don't you pause your video and try question nine? Remember that you're going to use the distributive property twice here. We have like terms. 15 minus two, and then negative three X minus two X. Remember the X stays the same. We just add and subtract the coefficients. Did you get that? Pause your video and try this one. That negative changes the signs inside the bracket. And then we can combine like terms. Good. Last thing I wanna talk about this week is the sums and products practice. We're not actually going to use this in the course for a couple of weeks, but some of you are going to need to have practice before we start using it. So I start talking about it now. In about mm, three weeks, we're going to be factoring quadratic trinomials, where I'm gonna ask you to find two numbers with a product of some number, and a sum of some number. Now remember product, it means multiplication. Remember sum, it means addition. So if we're looking for two numbers with a product of negative 12 and a sum of one, I hope you just know what they are. But if you don't know what they are just by thinking about it, you should start by listing the factors of 12 in pairs. So we have one times 12, two times six, three times four. Now I see when I'm subtracting, three and four would give me one. So 
So I'm putting the same numbers in both places here. But I need a product of negative 12. That tells me one of these has to be negative. I need a sum of positive one. Three needs to be negative. So we have some practice here and there's a lot more practice on your class Moodle page. Let me show that to you. Um, where is it? Oops, there we go. So on your class Moodle page, you have all of these sums and product worksheets to practice. So if you're not finding these examples that I'm going to do with you now easy, make sure over the next three weeks, you practice them. Let's do the first two together. We need a product of 36. So two numbers that multiply to equal 36 and a sum of seven, I mean of 13. I don't know where that seven came from. So we list the product, the factors of 36, one and 36, two and 18, three and 12, four and nine, six and six. I can see that four times nine works. So these are my numbers. Let's try 27 and negative 12. This is our product. This is our sum. I'll list the factors of 27. It's going to have to be three and nine, but I need a sum of negative 12. These both need to be negative. And that's good because negative three times negative nine gives me that positive 27. So work through the rest of this. Remember that you have those drills at the end. Make sure you complete the quizzes that are due this week.